so we've got four quad Cortex A15s at two gigahertz and four quad A7s at two gigahertz. Uh, pardon my math, I went to public school, but ain't that an eight core system? Woo! Hey, hey, what's happening, guys? Uh, before we start today's video, pardon me, last video, and today's video, maybe tomorrow's video. I hear a lot of my breathing on there. If you guys don't know it, I'm suffering from a disease called congestive heart failure. No, it's not killing me, but it is hurting me. And these last few days, I've been having some fluid buildup trouble. So you're going to hear me breathing a lot heavier. I don't need any pity messages or anything. Everything's fine. Just want you to know why you hear me breathing heavier and things are like that. Anyway, on to the video. We got something cool here today. This is from my Amazon list. <laughs> Jeez, I can't talk these days. My Amazon wish list. A big thank you to Dave. You know who you are, Dave. Let's open this up and have a look. This is the Odroid XU4. An octa-core single board computer. This may be a very good competitor to the Raspberry Pi 3. So let's take a closer look at it. Starting from this edge of the board, we have our Ethernet connector, which is a gigahertz Ethernet connector, USB 2.0, a 2.1 millimeter 5 volt barrel jack input, micro SD card slot, and HDMI slot. Over here we have our boot selector switch to select between micro SD and EMMC. On this side of the board, we have an actual power switch and two USB 3.0 ports. And on this side of the board, we have a backup battery, whoops, a backup battery connector and the serial UART connector. If we look at the bottom of the board here, you can see the EMMC connector slot there. Unfortunately, the guts of the system are hidden underneath this big fan, but let's go over the parts anyway. Okay, again, hidden underneath the fan are some of the goodies, which include the processor, which is the Samsung Exynos 5422 system on a chip. And inside of it is a quad-core ARM Cortex A15 and a quad-core tech quad-core ARM Cortex A7 and the Mali T628 GPU running at 2 gigahertz. So this is an octa-core system at 2 gigahertz. 2 gigabytes of memory. We have one uh, connector slot over here. This is a 12-pin GPIO port and it is I squared C and I squared S for audio applications. Over here, we have a 30 pin port and it contains I squared C, SPI, UART, and ADC for electronic and robotics. Also a 2.1 millimeter pitch. Now, different from a lot of other things. Now, if we look at a standard Arduino, we're dealing with five volt logic if we look at the Raspberry Pi and some of the uh, Samcore Arduino chips, we're dealing with 3.3 volt logic. Here we're dealing with 1.8 volt logic. So that is a little bit different. An apples to oranges comparison with the Raspberry Pi. We got the eight cores, two separate ARM Cortex chips versus the Raspberry Pi's uh, quad-core A53. 
Uh, the GPU is the Mali T628. The uh, Raspberry Pi has a Video Core 4. The uh, Odroid has 2 gigabytes of RAM at 933 megahertz. The Raspberry Pi has 1 gigabyte of RAM. Storage, we have the micro SD and the eMMC5. The Pi just has the micro SD. We have one USB 2 and two USB 3s. The Pi beats it out in sheer numbers with four USB 2s. They both have HDMI out for video and audio. The Pi, of course, has HDMI out and composite video and audio out. The Odroid has 100,000 um, RJ45 Ethernet port. The Pi has a 10100, but the Pi beats it out as it has built in Wi Fi and Bluetooth. They both run on 5 volt. Uh, that 4 is a mistake there. The Raspberry Pi can get by on about 2 amps. The Odroid needs 4 amps. And what's really nice is when you buy the Odroid, you get the power supply. And what we got here. Input 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, 0.8 amp. Output 5 volt, 4 amp. So that's a pretty nice power supply. Nice long cable. Let's take a look at the software. Okay, Hard Kernel, the manufacturer of the Odroid boards, has a uh, distro of the Ubuntu Linux flavor. And we can get it by going to their website, hardkernel.com, which brings us here to the Odroid page. And if we click on WikiWiki, Wiki, it brings us here. And we have our different boards for the Odroid XU4. We can come down here and we can find um, OS images, Android, Linux, Ubuntu. And then we'll pop on over here. And we'll find the latest uh, version, which is somewhere around here for the XU4. There we go, October 23rd, 2017. Right here, it is this one, the Ubuntu image, which all we need to do is download, and we should be able to install it. Easy peasy chicken greasy. Play along with me now, if you will. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to format our disk using SD Formatter. And option, we need to make sure size adjustment is on. And we'll format. Okay, formatting is complete. And in a second here, this should pop up somewhere around 32 gigabytes. Refresh. Okay, there we go, 29.7 gigabytes. Next up, we're gonna use Win32 Disk Imager. Now you could also use Etcher. Again, we want to make sure that we have the proper device selected. Otherwise, bad things may happen. And we're going to choose our image. Okay, so I have images here. And we want Ubuntu Mate for the Odroid. We will select it and choose right and agree with it. All right, we've written the file to the card, which I have here. This is a uh, SanDisk Ultra uh, UHS-1 32 gigabyte card. That's the fastest card I have on hand. And it goes into the micro SD card slot right here. Then we're going to put our keyboard into there, and the USB plugs in chair, like that. And let me uh, bring this up really close here for you. 
and point out we have a power LED to the left of the power socket there and a it's a live blue LED here this one will be red on the left blue on the right uh, when we get a double blink the heartbeat that means the kernel is running so let's uh, I think we've got everything set up keyboard is on monitor is lit up all we need now is to plug in the power that's how they say power in Pittsburgh power it's like our old coach Bill Cower car or Dwight D Eisenhower Eisenhower all right power goes in we have a red light we have a solid blue light and the fan is active oh and we've got activities okay we are powering up the odroid here give it a second and we should see some uh, goodness there we go you can see up top we have the eight cores showing up nice quick little boot up here there's our happy little mouse and we can log in another couple seconds and it should take us to the Ubuntu mate desktop and there we are very nice indeed and we have a nice little menu bar up here where we can see accessories education graphics internet office hello there we go we have the Libra office sound and video system tools and universal access then we have places and some more system tools over here and we can see about mate and this is the mate desktop environment 1.12.1 1. and I think it's also here under system administration I only played with this for a couple minutes so give me a second here to here we go here's the mate system monitor and you can see up here we have all of our CPUs so if I uh, if I drag this up here into the corner and we launch an application like say chromium web browser we can see the activity jumping up on all of our CPUs and then down here we can see our memory and swap history very nice you can see we're hitting a lot on CPU 8 CPU 6 so let's come over here and we'll load up YouTube and again we're seeing uh, how hard we're hitting our processors so that's pretty cool let's see what else we can find out about this neat system with eight cores okay next up we're gonna run uh, Sysbench CPU on all eight cores for 30 seconds and see how that goes okay well that's one we can take a look at the system monitor and you can see that all eight of our cores are banging away at 100 percent all right we'll get back to our terminal window here and there we can see I told it to run for 30 seconds it ran for 16.219 seconds total number of events 10,000 but up but up up so there is our sysbench info interesting let's go 
check out something that makes a little more sense. If we come down here to System Tools, we can go through the Hard Info, which is what we did with all the raspberry and other flavor of pies. So we can see our operating system. Oops, sorry, bumped the camera. Our kernel is 3.1.10. How many, oh, counts how many boots we had. Oh, trust me, those numbers are off. We haven't had any boots Monday, December 31st. Display, environment variables, users. Interesting. Devices, processor. Has no information about our processor. Memory, here's our total memory. PCI devices. USB devices, yeah. What kind of USB devices have we got? Because I've got a couple of them going here. I don't know. It doesn't seem to find them. Interesting. How about network interfaces? Ethernet zero. Okay. So let's do our benchmarks. We'll do the blowfish. And we'll come back later and I'll pull up the results from the uh, Raspberry Pis and we'll see exactly how much faster this is. I have a feeling it's quite a bit faster since we're doing eight cores at two gigahertz as opposed to the Raspberry Pi is what? Four cores at 1.2. So 21.44 and we'll do one more. We'll kind of calculate the 40 second Fibonacci number and we'll see how that pops up 5.23 so if you look up here you can see the numbers from the Raspberry Pi so now I need your help I have a Wi-Fi don't go in here if we bring up uh, is it connection information? No, it's not that one. Edit connections? Is that it? Yeah, okay. So I've got a Wi-Fi connection in here, but no matter what I do, it doesn't connect. Now, um, another great YouTuber, uh, CBM1980 Amiga, has suggested I get the RTL 8188 dongle. I have one of those coming, so we'll be trying it with that. But if any of you guys can tell me how to set up a Wi-Fi connection with Linux, I'd be very pleased to learn. So yeah, very cool. Again, this is the Odroid XU4. Very nice very powerful system so I hope you guys enjoyed this little examination of it if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share don't forget to subscribe a big thank you to all my patrons and a special thank you to Dave that's it I'm out peace <laughs>